We will be continuing, this will be in the second video in our urinary system series. As we look at the kidneys, we would have to, in a, an organism, lift up all of the organs and there would still be tissue that we would have to tear through. That tissue is the peritoneal tissue. So the kidneys are retroperitoneal, meaning they are behind the peritoneal tissue. They are attached to the posterior body wall right below the 12th thoracic rib. So just the, the lowest ribs, you can feel that on your back. Renal ptosis is when the kidneys drop due to inadequate support. Uh, it can cause a kink in the ureter. This typically happens in older individuals, individuals who are anorexic, individuals who have lost a lot of weight, then that peritoneal is not holding the kidney in place tight enough. Uh, it's become loose because of that loss of weight. And then the kidney can float, move around, and can cause the ureters to kink up. The function of the kidney is to regulate the uh, pH, to remove nitrogen waste, to help regulate blood pressure, to excrete excessive uh, metabolic substances, uh, to maintain water balance, to secrete um, erythropoietin. Eryth erythropoietin is used to stimulate the red blood cells to form, and it helps in synthesizing vitamin D. There are three layers of tissue that surround and support and protect the kidneys. The renal capsule. Uh, the renal capsule is um, the innermost layer. It's a primarily a barrier to infection. The adipose capsule is the fatty tissue, tissue that holds the kidney in place. The renal fascia is the thin membranous connective tissue that anchors the kidney to the body wall. The interior anatomy of the um, kidneys, the cortex is the outer layer, the medulla is the inner layer, the medulla is where the, re uh, the renal pyramids are found, and then the renal pelvis is where the major calyx empties into and the ureter enters into the kidney. Looking at a cross section of the kidney, the very uh, outer thin layer that covers the kidney is the renal capsule. This area right here is the renal cortex. From here in is the re renal medulla. And you've got it labeled there. The triangular structures are the renal pyramids. The tip of the renal pyramid is the renal papilla. In between the renal pyramids are the renal um, columns. Right here is the minor calyx. Our minor calyx empties into a major calyx. The major calyces empty into the renal pelvis. The renal pel pelvis is the area where the urine can flow down into the ureter. We have the renal arteries. We have the renal veins. This does a nice job showing you where the cortex and the medulla are. Again, the pyramid, uh, the papilla, the columns, the minor calyx, major calyx, uh, the ureter, the pelvis. This area right here, it's showing you how the kidney is kind of bent inward there, and that is the hilus. And that's kind of the, the when it's kidney shaped or bean shaped, that's that indentation that we see there. Here you can see uh, what the kidneys would look like on a sheep kidney. Um, so you can really see those pyramids. You can see the, um, the renal cortex nicely. You can see the ureters right in there. Here we have the renal pelvis. The tip of the pyramids is the uh, papilla. In between the pyramids are the renal columns. Again, this is gonna be where you would have your ureter renal pelvis, this outer covering here, and you can see it right there, how thin that is, that's the renal capsule. Here's the cortex, you can see the medulla. Within the medulla is where you're gonna see your pyramids. Tip of the pyramids is the papilla. They're gonna open it to the minor calyx. Can't really see the major calyx here. You can see the renal pelvis. 
looking at the ureter it's um, 10 to 12 inches long it runs from the kidney to the bladder you have two because you have two kidneys the ureters will enter the bladder at the base and they're going to enter in such a way that um, during the pressure of urination the um, ureters are going to be compressed and closed and they're going to be compressed and closed because we don't want backflow of urine going back into the ureters. This will prevent uh, any bacteria from spreading and, and prevent bacteria from causing bladder infections. Now the ureters work through peristalsis, which is that wave-like contractions. This is going to carry the, um, the urine from the kidney to the bladder. If an individual has kidney stones, many times what happens is those stones get stuck in the ureter and uh, they're blocking the urine and they're very painful because when they pass, one, they're very large, two, they're blocking the, the urine from passing, which makes it uncomfortable, and then three, they are, can be jagged shaped so that when they're moving through the ureter, they're actually scraping the insides and causing pain and discomfort.